Oh, yeah, you can. Three T squared, 18. Three and 18 have three in common. Do they both have T's? No, the 18 does not. So we can't have a T as part of the greatest common factor. So three is actually the greatest thing that they have in common. All right, 4B to the third, negative 2B squared, negative 6B. 2, 4, and 6, the largest thing they have in common is 2. Now, they all have Bs. This one has B to the third, B to the second, and B to the first. You have to go with what they all have, and they all have at least B to the first. So our greatest common factor is 2B and 2B. They are all Yes. Yeah. There. Now we will factor it completely. The first step of factoring is finding that greatest common factor, that thing they all have in common. So 3x to the third, negative 12x, and positive 15x. 3, 12, and 15 have 3 as a common factor. Do they all have x's? Yes, of course. They all have at least x to the first power. So now, this becomes like the opposite of what we were starting with today. Today we were given 3x, a set of parentheses, and you had to multiply it in. This is like the backwards of that. So essentially we're dividing all of these terms by 3x, which you don't need to write this. But we're really doing 3x to the third divided by 3x, negative 12x squared divided by 3x, and positive 15x divided by 3x. And you can use your knowledge of simplifying fractions and your uh, law of exponents with division, where you're subtracting the exponents. You can do that, and that'll get you the right answer. I like to think of it like this, like, kind of like a fill-in-the-blank problem. 3x times what would give me 3x to the third? So I know 3 times 1 would give me 3, okay, but I don't need to write the 1, because x times x squared would give me x to the third. So I'm like, oh, well, I have one x. I need three x's, right, x to the third. So I'm missing two more there. That's how I like to think of it. Three, I need negative 12. So three times negative four would give me negative 12. I have x to the first power. I need x to the second power. So I need one more x. And we'll clean this up kind of as the last step here. Last one. 3 times what would give me positive 15? 3 times positive 5. And I have x to the first. I need x to the first. I don't need any more x's. So that will be our final answer. But again, we're going to clean it up. So we just have 3x on the outside. Inside we have x squared minus 4x plus 5. So... You know it's correct, or, I mean, something to look for is your stuff in parentheses shouldn't have any common factors except for one. So they shouldn't all have x's. They shouldn't all have y's or whatever. Because if they did, then that means you didn't take out the greatest common factor correctly. So let's try another one. Pew! Pew! Use the GCF to factor each polynomial. We have to figure out what they have in common first. So 8 and 12, you might be like, oh, well, 2 goes into those. Sure, it does. But 4 is the greatest common factor here. Do they both have x? Yeah. They both have at least x to the first power. Great. That's our common factor. So 4x times what would give me 8x squared? Well, 4 times 2 is 8, and x times x would give me x squared. All right, for now the 12, negative 12 is 4 times what would give me negative 12? Negative 3. Sorry. And x, we don't need any more x's, so this would be our final answer. I only set my timer because I don't want the video to cut off on you guys. <laughs>